Good morning, family. How are you? Doing okay? I hope you are. Uh, but before we get into anything else, let's talk to our dad. Dad, we thank you so much for this day and for your love. We thank you that you saw this day already. So we don't have to worry about what's ahead. We just, ahead. We just have to um, be concerned about whether we're holding on to your hand. So we thank you that you've made provision for us in everything that is coming our way. And that you've reminded us, because you know who we are, that we don't have to be anxious about anything, but we can tell you about everything. And the peace that you are will protect our hearts and minds. So I thank you for that. Thank you for what you have in store for us today. Thank you that as we hold on to your hand and we listen to your wisdom, that the enemy is annoyed and frustrated that he can't come from that angle again but that we will trust you with all of our heart and we won't lean to our own understanding, our way of looking at things and everything that we do, we're going to acknowledge you so you can show us and lead us down the right path. In Jesus name. Amen. All right, family. It is, uh, it's morning. <laughs> it's 8.02. Um, so let's take a look at our daily bread. The last time we were together, I believe might've been, um, might have been Friday. I'm not even sure if we did Sabbath morning. So let's see if we can get to our daily bread. We got a lot going on on this screen. I don't even have it up. So the title is, in quotes, I am. Love it. March 18th, there's a picture of a mountain top range and just the the size of it is brought into view because all those little things the little dots on there are trees it's amazing i am it is written by uh, kenneth peterson and he comes to us from the scripture found in exodus chapter 3 verses 11 to 15. let's take a look at that we'll put that in um biblegateway.com let's see what lesson we're to learn today all right, take a look at the um, International Children's, the Amplified Version, and the Message Version. Let's see which one that we can look at today. Let's see, let's see. You know what? I kind of like, let's take a look at the International, I'm sorry, the, the Message Version. It says, Moses answered God, Moses answered God, sorry, but why me? What makes you think that I could ever go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? I will be with you, God said, and this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain. Then Moses said to God, suppose I go to the people of Israel and I tell them the God of your father sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What do I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God continued with Moses. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name, and this is how I will always be known. All right, let's get back here and take a look at it. I am, Kenneth Peterson focuses on verse 14, which says, in summary, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he writes, Jack, a professor of philosophy and literature, had a brilliant mind. He declared himself an atheist at the age of 15 and in adulthood admittedly, I'm sorry, adamantly defended his atheistic faith. Christian friends tried to persuade him. As Jack puts it, everyone and everything had joined the other side, but the Bible, he had to admit, was different from other literature and myths. About the Gospels, he wrote, if ever a myth had become fact, had become incarnated, it would be just like this. One Bible passage became most influential to Jack. Exodus 3. God was calling Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? God responded, 
I am who I am. This passage is a complex play on words and names, but reflects God's eternal presence from the beginning. Interestingly, later Jesus echoed the same when he said, before Abraham was born, I am. Jack, better known as C.S. Lewis, was deeply persuaded by this passage. This was all that the one true God should need to say, simply that he is the I am. In a life-changing moment, Lewis gave in and admitted God was God. This was the beginning of a journey for Lewis toward accepting Jesus. Perhaps we struggle with belief as Lewis did, or maybe with a lukewarm faith. We might ask ourselves if God is truly the I am in our lives. We need to ask that question. I added that last part, last part y'all. Let's take a look at the insight for today. It's written by Bill Crowder, and he writes, God's name is more than just a way to identify him. It is a revelation of his person and character. When Moses encountered him in the burning bush, God identified himself as I am who I am or the I am. Scholars say the Hebrew can also be rendered as I will be what I will be. One of the amazing realities contained in this title is that God is beyond time. Even more, he's completely unaffected by it, though in his mercy, he chooses to work within time. This reality is reaffirmed in the New Testament, where we read, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. That's found in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. In the person of Jesus, our timeless God stepped into time to give us an eternity unbounded by time. I am. Let's talk about it. You know what I like about um, that conversation and the phrase that they're talking about? I am. When, <laughs> when we're looking for peace, right? Everything is crazy. We don't have the ability to go and somebody, you know, may want to go and have, take a vacation, you know, palm trees would be a wonderful thing for them, but they don't have the money to do that. They're looking for peace, right? So now they're equating peace with a place and with uh, something that they need to purchase, which their, their funds limit them with, limit them from doing, right? Uh, so their peace... There, this piece is tied to that. But what the phrase I am uh, allows us is that we have all we need in him. If you need peace, he is peace, right? So um, Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7 reminds us that we're not to be anxious about anything, but we're supposed to take everything to him in prayer. So it's for you, it might be finances. For you, it might be your children. For you, it might be this habit that you've been trying to get over. For you, it might be this issue that you've been trying to resolve. And it's been causing you agita or anxiousness or whatever the case is. And our dad is asking us to come to him and said, listen, don't be anxious about that. Talk to me about it. Relieve yourself. Take it off your shoulders. And um, and to plead to him about things. And I think in the pleading, it's a pouring out of our hearts because as we do that, the anxiousness goes away. I think the problem what we have, um, and Pastor Q was talking about this this morning, that we, uh, on, on the sense of um, confession, when we don't confess, uh, what's going on in our heart, either what we've done wrong or what we're feeling at the particular moment, that stays on the inside of us and it affects us spiritually, emotionally, and physically, right? So spiritually, it creates a distance between us and our father because we, we're keeping the secret from him, right? We're not telling him about that thing. And we're not keeping it from him in that he doesn't know, but we're withholding are telling him of the thing. And so now we're withholding it from him, which means we're holding it here and it's still weighing on our heart. So emotionally now 
we're feeling anxious or depressed or whatever it is that's coming to the surface for us because we've kept that here. And then physically for us, it is affecting us because now that anxious anxiousness has shown up on, um, on our blood pressure as an elevated blood pressure. We've then um, tried to use something else to alleviate that anxiousness. Maybe we started an, a new habit, not a good one. We started smoking or we started drinking or we've been doing that for a while trying to relieve that, that stress, right? And so now that anxiousness is compounded with that habit that is taking more from us. So we got that on top of it, right? And so we feel like we're on that that uh, hamster wheel or where um, that snowball that as you roll it in the snow, it just keeps getting bigger and keep getting bigger. But if we get back to the root, right, that thing that we have in our heart and we confess it, we tell it to our father, it comes away from us. We've surrendered it to him and he works that thing out. And so he works the thing out and he works on our trust in him. So now don't give it to him, talking to me too, <laughs> and then tell him how to handle his business. He is the I am, right? And so give it to him and then rest in the peace of him while we do our peace and our part in what he's given us the authority and the ability to do in this moment. Trust in him with all of our heart. And we're not supposed to lean to our own way of thinking. We get real arrogant because we think that we have we know a thing. We've been doing this for a long time. We can't be taught anything. The Bible tells us that we need to be teachable, right? Otherwise, we're stuck in that same position. And I, I can imagine just, you know, in the Dr. Phil way, how's that working for you, right? You still have all of the other stuff. And maybe you're used to carrying that particular weight, but wouldn't it? Can you imagine how free we would be if we let it go? Mm, I'm not going to sing the song. But if we gave it over to our father to be free from that thing. And who the son, the Bible says, sets free is free for real. And because we've surrendered it to one who has the ability to handle all these things, in fact, we're catching up to what he has already done. And now we're free of the weight that we were carrying that we didn't need to carry at all. Let's pray for each other that we allow our father to be all the I am that he is, right? And that we will trust him and hold his hand as we walk through those valleys, those mountaintop experiences the thing that we can count on, the one that we can count on, the faithfulness that we can count on is from our Father and our big brother, Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit, who is here to lead and guide us into everything that's true and right about ourselves and the situation around us. So let's be anxious about nothing. Let's stop holding it on the inside. Let's give it over to the ones who are qualified to handle it and us to hear the direction of our Father and to walk in that way. All right, would you do that for me? I'll do that. I'll, I'll keep praying for us, but help me to be reminded of that too. There's a tendency when the next thing comes, right? All of a sudden we're getting ready to worry. Uh, 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 no, this is not for me. Dad, here you go. <laughs> Knock on his door, drop it at his, at his feet. There you go. You can have that one. Let me know what part of it, if any, you want me to do. And that way we can have perfect peace because that peace is in him. All right, let's talk to our dad. Daddy, we thank you so much for this day because you are just plain good. And yet, no, the things that we run in today, they will not all be good. But your presence, you've promised. And we've done such a bad job on the word promise that we've attached the fact that somebody else has broken promises or even we've broken promises to you. You have committed yourself to being with us in our trouble. So we don't have to fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be thrown into the midst of the sea, though that thing that we have been uh, nervous about or anxious about should happen, though that person should show up, though that letter should show up, that help us to realize that our peace is you. 
and you're here with us. And you're able to be so much more for us when we allow you to be who you are. So thank you for being our peace in this moment. Thank you for being God enough to deal with the fact that um, we've been mad at you. And I I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that you're, you're God enough to do that. And then dad enough to be patient with us, to show us what it means to be with us. Thank you. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer, for specifically answering the prayers and the heart's de desire of each of your children. Help us to authentically come to you and to lay at your feet all those things that we've held to our chest that have been weighing down on our chest, weighing down on our hearts and minds and have us, have had us uh, create new habits and, and things that we need to get over because those things are only temporary peace. Thank you. We love you. Teach us to love you better, love ourselves better, love our neighbors better, to love our enemies. Because any time and every time that we show in the authentic love of you, love, you win. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, family, remember the love we have for God is measured by the love we have for those we love the least. It's found in Matthew 25, verse 40, and it's true. So let's take the time. Make the time you and I have been given some time. He's going to ask us, what do we do with the time? And may we tell him that we love someone with the love of the Lord. We did it today. We're doing it right now. Let's love out loud, family. Let's do good things. Let's do daddy's good things. Bye-bye.